There are several efficiency improvements to our drafting and project management tools. Dimensions have received several new updates. Let's begin by looking at these enhancements. Fractional dimensions can be displayed as horizontal, diagonal, or vertical format. The preview will also show how the dimensions will look with the changes. A scaling setting allows you to adjust the text size to make dimensions more readable and compact. These settings can be saved in your dimension defaults for your specific style. You can control the location and orientation of a dimension centerline indicator. When you click on the dimension string, there is a move handle to position the CL symbol. Wall dimensions have added options for more precise placement. For both exterior and interior walls, there is control for the primary and secondary wall side to which dimensions will snap. To edit dimension extensions, a table interface is available to manage the settings and control multiple elements at once. Dimensioning framing in a wall detail has been an easy process. In X14, framing can more easily be dimensioned in elevation and cross-section views with added snap control and feedback. As I use the end-to-end -end dimension tool, it picks up the framing member and snaps the dimension to its location, just as it would in a wall detail. In the framing dimensions defaults, there is an additional setting to locate the framing for a single side only or for both sides. With the manual dimension tool, I can quickly dimension the center of the framing members. And if the wall is reframed or you have automatic framing on, the dimensions will be retained. For text objects, you can add an arrow by using the new edit handle found on the edge of the text selection box. Click on the edge of the text box and drag the edit handle to create a line with an arrow. For notes and callouts, you can rotate the symbol and then adjust the orientation of the inside text to a specific angle or to automatically follow the shape. Callouts can be linked to CAD details, saved plan views, camera views, and wall details in the current plan or an external plan. On the Callouts link panel, you can browse to a specific item and create a link. For this example, I'll create a link to the garage door's portal frame detail. When you double-click on the callout, it will open that link to the detail. For this shower wall elevation, the niche detail links to that specific item. And, finally, on this callout, it links to the wall detail for the framing. Schedule callout labels and object labels can both be displayed. On the Schedules Label panel, you can choose to display both a callout and object label, or just one or the other. When using a callout, there is added control for its corresponding layer. By placing the callout on a separate layer, you can control which label is displayed. In the floor plan, you can see the nomenclature label, and in the kitchen and bath plan, you can see the callout label. Both are controlled through the layer settings. You can transpose rows and columns in schedules. When swapping the rows and columns, you might find it helpful to scale the images when they are included in a schedule. New text styles for schedules provide a varying text between a schedule's title, headers, and row text. Using the panels for the title, header, and main text styles, the text formatting can be customized for each item. Backsplashes, countertops, and material regions can be added to schedules. In a new custom schedule for the kitchen, 
I'll select the categories of backsplashes and countertops, both automatically generated and manually created. With this type of schedule, I can provide it to my fabricator for a bid or use it to aid in my cost estimating. Slabs, terrain, and polylines can also be added to schedules. For this example, I have created a terrain disturbance schedule. When I use the Find and Plan for the terrain lot, then open that object to the Schedule tab, you can see that I've marked to include this object in the schedule and also included it for my custom terrain disturbance schedule. By default, these objects are not marked to be included in schedules for performance due to the potential large number of polylines in a plan. An object information panel has also been included to add additional information for these objects. A fill style can be applied for wall footings. On the foundation panel within the wall specification is a control to change the fill style. For this slab footing, I have a light gray solid fill applied. For brick ledge walls, a new ledge line layer is available to turn its display on or off for plan views. In layouts, default behaviors can be set up for the layout boxes. The layout boxes are the bounding boxes that include borders and labels. On the Line Styles panel, you can control the layer, color, style, and weight of the bounding box. There's a Fill Style panel to manage the fill. The Label panel includes options to suppress, include an automatic or specific label, and to use a callout or marker. In using a marker, I'll set the text to have an automatic label, center justified, use the box scale macro, justified away from the marker. When I send this floor plan view to the layout, you see the resulting label matches the new default. The layout box can be opened and changed to vary for the default setting. The layout box object can be relinked to the plan, elevation, camera, or other item. Depending on the object's type, you can change the Save Plan View or Camera View options. You can also change the scale of the layout on the Box Scale panel. On the New Layer Set panel, you can make changes to those items that are not part of a saved plan view, such as an elevation or 3D view. When a layout box is selected, in the lower edit menu, there are three new tools. The first is a pan and scale. When you click on the object, you can pan it around within the bounding box. While in pan mode, there is a scale box on the lower corner you can modify. The next tool is to center the object. And the last tool is to fill the bounding box with the object's entire view and change the scale to fit. And if you have the need to rotate an elevation or 3D view on a layout, there is a new rotate handle. There are several great new features in Chief Architect X14, and you can expect to see it this summer. And remember, all new software purchases include a year of support and software assurance. So, if you are not currently a customer, get started today with Chief Architect.